Chapter 116 Surviving in a Wasteland World As soon as Maximus jumped, he closed the passage. Huff! Huff! Maximus breathed heavily as he calmed himself down. This was the first time he had felt so out of control. Without mana and soul power, he was back to square one, relying solely on the system. After calming himself, he looked at the panel from the beginning. He had only seen the mission and hadn't noticed the details. Special Mechanic Trial, Death Mode Reward, Special Student Status Wasteland World, a world dominated by machinery Due to a failed biological experiment, the entire world has turned into a biological nightmare. Survive for a hundred years Note, the body is biologically enhanced to live up to a hundred years. Mana and soul power are prohibited and cannot be used. Biological monster ranges from tier 0 to tier 6. Trial Participants, 12,421,327 Death here will lead to real-world death. Good luck and give it your best. Damn, I knew Golden Gates weren't a good sign, Maximus cursed. Seeing the Golden Gate, he had acted impulsively and entered without any investigation. Now he had to endure a nightmarish environment, with Tier 6 creatures lurking around. That colossal monster earlier must have been Tier 6, Maximus thought. Now he had to survive using only his mortal body. Biological modification should be possible, but given his current circumstances, he shelved that thought for now. Fortunately, this is a world with plenty of resources, Maximus sighed in relief. The solution to this situation should lie within those materials, Maximus murmured as he noticed various materials scattered on the ground. System, scan all the materials and display the relevant information from the Myriad World Mall, Maximus commanded. Soon, all the materials around him were scanned, and the system sifted through the Myriad World Mall for information on these materials. Myriad World Mall Black Steel Number 1224 Aluminum Gold Número 24 Halt Plastic Número 3 A vast library of material information was available for purchase. Maximus operated the system and acquired all the available information. 13 million books, price, 230,000 magic crystals. Confirm? 1,000 gold equals one magic crystal. It's surprisingly affordable to buy material information, Maximus muttered as he clicked to confirm. During this time, all of his money had been converted into system points solely for this trial. Magic crystals, 1.2 billion. It was an immense sum, but Maximus doubted whether it would be enough for a hundred years of survival. Unfortunately, this was a virtual world, and he couldn't purchase physical items, otherwise, he could easily break out of this trial. Soon, all the information was digitized and passed through the system. Physical books were not feasible, so the system intelligently transformed the information into a digital format for easy access. Rumble. Bang. While he was browsing the system, the undead creatures above seemed to have detected his location as they pounded on the sewage cover. I need to be faster, Maximus thought. System, transmit the information directly, Maximus commanded. Soon, a river of information flowed through his mind as if it would never end. Unable to use his soul power, he couldn't skin the knowledge with his consciousness. So, he could only rely on the system. The downside was that it was excruciatingly painful. Ugh. Maximus stifled his agony as it felt like his head was about to explode. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the information transfer concluded. Huff. 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 I should pace it more slowly next time, Maximus said, wiping his sweat from the earlier pain. Without lingering he opened his system to allocate points. 13 million mechanical material, initial, 0 slash 2 billion. He quickly added life points. Plus 400, 000, 000, 000 life points. This time, the torrent of information was gentle, even comfortable. Maximus felt as if he were immersed in a river of knowledge. 13 million mechanical material, transcendent, max. Huh? Maximus's eyes snapped open. Roar. The undead above appeared to be shifting the sewer cover. With swift reflexes, Maximus hastily closed it. A close call, he muttered with relief, then turned his attention to the surrounding scrap materials. This should be enough to craft an electronic air gun, Maximus assessed, examining the broken pieces. A worn-out battery. Oh, these materials can be synthesized into a top-grade lithium-ion. Huh? A synthetic metal no. 72, lucky. 
After a few minutes, he had gathered all the necessary materials to fashion a mechanical airgun. A rotation here. I should connect it like this. It's too narrow, I should widen the passage. Huh? My hands have become so flexible and precise. Maximus mumbled as he assembled various materials. Done! Maximus exclaimed excitedly. Gazing at the odd, bulky air gun, he could hardly believe it was his creation. Without a blueprint, he had been forced to piece the materials together haphazardly. This shouldn't compromise the gun's strength, Maximus assessed. Now, tier 1 and lower should just need a shot from my gun. Feeling elated, he opened the sewer cover and quickly moved back. Roar. An undead creature fell down, lunging toward him. The air around him compressed and shot through the undead. Bang! The undead's head disintegrated a few meters away due to inertia. Basic, Maximus murmured confidently. One after another, the undead fell as he fired at them. However, just as he was about to celebrate, a hint of suffocation washed over him. Damn, the air is running out. As the air gun compressed the air around it, the atmosphere surrounding Maximus was depleting. I'll get out first. He didn't wait for the undead to fall one by one. Instead, he advanced as they approached, choosing to fire into the ground. The sewer passage was blocked, so he couldn't go that way. He had no choice but to surface and find his way out. Fortunately, he had the air gun, which made it relatively safe. Furthermore, the lithium synthesis he had created with his transcendent mastery was long-lasting. He estimated that even if he fired continuously for three days and three nights, the lithium wouldn't run out. With enough materials and a proper environment, he could even create nuclear fusion on his own. Soon, he managed to escape the group of undead and found a safe house. It should be safe here, Maximus sighed as he settled onto a sofa. However, seeing the colossal monsters hundreds of miles away kept him on edge. I'll get out of here tomorrow. After barricading his location to ensure no sound or smell would escape, he jumped into his bed, embracing the darkness. The next day Maximus woke up. As he looked around, he suddenly remembered why he was in this situation. There's a lot more to do, Maximus encouraged himself. But how can I get out of here? System, scan and list all available materials, Maximus commanded. A list appeared, revealing materials he could use to escape quickly. Huh? A mechanical RV? Maximus grew excited when he spotted a damaged RV near his safe house. It's in bad shape. But with my transcendent mastery, fixing this should be easy, he concluded. Soon, he left the house, firing at the undead to prevent them from accumulating. Bang! Bang! Each shot removed an undead's head. His firing speed was faster than his footsteps. I should add a silencer later, Maximus made a mental note. He arrived at the mechanical RV. What a beauty, a Maximus admired. Despite being badly worn, just looking at its structure allowed him to imagine its past glory. TSK, the chassis is still in good condition, it should be fine with a bit of tweaking. The battery is gone, it must have been taken after it was abandoned. Fortunately, I saved some of the synthesized lithium from yesterday. It should be enough to get out of here. Maximus got to work, rummaging around the city for materials to repair the mechanical RV. He reinforced his air gun to make it more durable, stealthy, and powerful. Now, it could even kill a tier 2 biological monster with a single shot. After a few days of trial and error, he perfected the mechanical RV's repairs. If he wasn't in such a hurry, he could have modified it to be even stronger. Now, I can finally escape from here, Maximus said with happiness. Looking at his masterpiece, he turned on the switch as he navigated out to a safe area. In the monitoring room, Fialon and various Tier 8 teachers watched all the individuals who had entered the Golden Gate. Oh, this Maximus is indeed a promising talent, Fialon commented as he observed Maximus successfully overcoming the initial challenge. Dean, there's also Ragnar from the Battle Mage Golden Gate. He's pushing through endless waves of beasts like nothing, a Tier 8 teacher reported. Don't solely focus on this year's elites. Pay attention to those seekers who have been refining themselves for a thousand years as well advised another Tier 8 teacher as he observed a seeker performing admirably in a Golden Gate trial. All right, let's continue observing these so-called geniuses as they continue to struggle. This is only the beginning, Fialon reminded. Chapter 117 Upgrading the RV A month later, Maximus arrived at a safe location. This place should be safe for a few years, Maximus muttered as he surveyed his surroundings. 
Due to the pervasive danger of the world, no place could be considered completely safe. Moreover, based on his experience in trials, the longer one remains in a world, the greater their susceptibility to misfortune and various dangers. Thus, Maximus needed to keep moving constantly. First, let's upgrade the mechanical RV. Although the mechanical RV was already top-notch, it was still no match for Tier 2 and above threats. System Scan The system scanned all the materials in the vicinity. Oh? There are many new materials. Seeing the new materials, he accessed the Myriad World Mall and purchased information about these materials. 100,000 books price, 3,500 magic crystals. Input the information. After acquiring it, he had the system integrate the information into his mind. However, this time he took it very slowly. An hour later, all the information about the hundred thousand materials was transferred to his brain. Due to the leisurely pace, there was no discomfort. He could even move while the system transmitted the information. One hundred thousand mechanical materials, initial zero slash thirty million. Plus six hundred life points. 100,000 mechanical materials, transcendent, max. After the torrent of information flowed into his mind, he became familiar with the new materials. But this is not enough, Maximus muttered dissatisfied. To ensure his survival for a hundred years, even in the face of tier 6 biological monsters, he needed to modify the RV to be indestructible. He started browsing the system for RV modification techniques. 20,000 books of tier 0 to 6 RV modification. Price, 2 million magic crystals. It's really not cheap, Maximus sighed. But he bought it regardless. 20,000 books of tier 0 to 6 RV modification, initial, 0 slash 5 billion. Mastering this will be quite costly, Maximus clicked his tongue. He checked his points to see if he had enough. Life points, 8,256,831. Potential points, 32,774,717. Well, there's still plenty to spare, Maximus sighed in relief, seeing the considerable number of points. Fortunately, he had saved up during these three months. He selected the option to add life points. Plus 3, 100, 000, 000, 000 life points. As his guarantee to rely on, even if it cost 3 million life points, he was willing to expend them. Soon, a torrent of information about RV remodeling flooded his mind. There were countless techniques, even ones that allowed direct upgrades to a spaceship or a destroyer. From various entertainment facilities to defensive and attack functions. There were even spacefolding techniques that use void stones. Huh. That's amazing, Maximus clenched his fist. If he could build his RV as he envisioned, this wasteland world would become like a vacation spot. As he looked at the surrounding materials, his mind couldn't help but race with ideas on how to modify the RV. Let's get started. Three years later. The safe area where Maximus was located underwent an earth-shaking transformation. Within a hundred-mile radius, there was no sign of undead, not even their bodies remained. The once-ruined buildings were gone and replaced with various mechanical organs. Making the wasteland become a huge mechanical factory. In an energy-refining factory, Maximus took out a crystallized energy that took him years of trial and error. This should be equivalent to a magic crystal, Maximus muttered. Over the past years, while he was upgrading his RV, he had been pondering the energy problem. Initially, he had considered using undead crystal cores, but in this world, anything that contained mana seemed to be non-existent. Thus, he had to strive to formulate his own energy source. He once thought of nuclear fusion. However, it proved to be much more challenging than he had anticipated. It was relatively simple for larger reactors, but to use it as an RV energy source, it needed to be compact and portable. After extensive brainstorming, he conceived a solution. Harnessing the rich biological energy of the undead and crystallizing and fortifying it. In his hand now lay the first successful prototype. Test, Maximus used an energy meter he had created in passing to measure the energy in the crystal. Testing. 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1 1.0, 1 1.1. 1 .1. Result. 1.3 exajoules of energy. So much? Maximus couldn't help but exclaim. To put it in perspective, Earth's yearly energy consumption is only about 500 to 1,000 exajoules of energy, and this single crystal could generate so much. Furthermore, it was composed of only hundreds of thousands of Tier 0 to Tier 2 undead. 
If he could use a higher tier undead, he was confident that he might be able to create an energy source comparable to the sun. I can use this for a few years, Maximus said as he clenched the crystallized energy. I'll call this energy crystal from now on. Upon stepping outside, he was met with a sight vastly different from the previous wasteland. Robotno. 2. What's the situation with the RV? The energy reactor is already installed, we're just awaiting the energy source, the robot replied. Throughout these years, he couldn't transform the city on his own, so he created these robots. Although it's not too advanced and practical, but in the early stages it's already very good. Fortunately, this world was once a mechanical world, filled with various materials and debris everywhere. With abundant material, he can let go of his hand and feet and create whatever he thought of. The only issue was the presence of biological monsters, otherwise, this would have been a paradise for mechanics. Take me there. Right away, host. Soon, they arrived at the city's center. What greeted him is the RV like a heart connected to various mechanical arms and devices. The RV had undergone a dramatic transformation. If the wheels were arms and legs, no one would doubt that this thing was truly a monster. Its size surpassed that of a mansion. The entire interior formed a comprehensive system, producing food, clothing, materials, and more. Essentially, it contained everything he would ever need in life. This transformation was accomplished in just a year. The only challenges that remained were its defense, attack capabilities, and energy. As he stepped inside, he entered the RV's energy reactor. Placing the energy crystal, the entire structure lit up, as if an ancient beast had been awakened. Booting. Booting successful. Welcome, host. The entire RV seemed to come alive, even greeting him. The entire vehicle's functions were facilitated and controlled by this intelligent program. Given the vehicle's immense size, it was practically impossible for him to control all its functions manually. Fortunately, he had previous experience in creating an intelligent program. From now on, I will name you Wanderer, Maximus said. Wanderer greets the host. Ha ha ha, now I can truly settle in this world, Maximus celebrated. Rumble. Just as he was celebrating, a rumble sounded in the distance. What's happening? Wanderer, scan and see what's happening, Maximus commanded. Since his system could only scan a few kilometers, it was more reliable to use the scanning device he had created. Host, a tier 4 biological monster, along with a group of tier 3 monsters, is approaching. What? Such bad luck, Maximus complained. He had just finished modifying the RV, and now monsters were coming his way. It seems like this world doesn't want me to get too comfortable, Maximus sighed. Retreat. Instruct the robots to evacuate the important materials, Maximus ordered. Wanderer complied with the command and sent signals to the robots in the city. Unfortunately, there are no stronger materials available, Maximus muttered. The RV's defense could only withstand Tier 3 attacks. Regarding the weapons, they were only effective against Tier 3 biological monsters. Of course, if he didn't care about the RV's destruction, the weapons could be overloaded to fend off Tier 4 biological monsters. However, he had dedicated three years to reaching this stage, so he wasn't willing to do that. A few minutes later. All important materials and items have been stored. Are we ready to go, host? Go. It's time to find stronger materials, a Maximus ordered. His primary limitation now was that only Tier 2 materials were available here. He only made them as strong as Tier 3 materials due to his transcendent mastery. Now, it's time to go out and explore to find more advanced materials. On the other side of the world. Huff, this world is too dangerous, a Silas muttered as he narrowly escaped danger. Despite spending millions of years studying in the time chamber, especially in the field of mechanics, it was still a drop in the bucket when it came to the multitude of materials. Now, in this wasteland world, he was unfamiliar with the materials. He can only fumble around and attempt to use similarities in the materials to create something. I wonder how Maximus is faring in this trial, Silas thought as he observed his state. Damn, another tier for biological monster, Silas cursed as he jumped into his modified vehicle to quickly escape. Chapter 118 Finding Another Human a few months have passed since Maximus escaped his base. Wanderer, host, there's a group of Tier 4 monsters located 170 kilometers away. Damn it, can't these monsters give me some peace? Maximus cursed. Go ahead, inform the collection robots to evacuate, Maximus ordered. 
Wanderer, understood, host. While the collection robots were evacuating, Maximus reminisced about the past few months. Maximus didn't know what had happened, but after he crossed the three-year mark, it seemed like this world had started to move. Yes, move. It was as if there was some sort of tracker on him that attracted monsters. And it wasn't just undead, various kinds of monsters were after him. To collect materials while moving, he had even modified mechanic and construction robots into collection robots. These robots would scan and gather materials as they moved. However, even with this, due to frequent movement, he could hardly get much done. Wanderer, host, all collection robots are in position. Good, let's move to another location, Maximus ordered. This was already the fifth city he had visited. Unfortunately, he hadn't had any luck finding higher level materials, the highest he could find was tier 3. Regrettably, there were too few of these to create anything meaningful. After days of travel, he arrived at another city. Wanderer, scan for the grades of materials in this city. The reason he didn't use the system was because its coverage was limited to a few kilometers. In Wanderer, the scanner he had created could scan up to a thousand kilometers and provide detailed information within a hundred kilometers. Wanderer, 300 unknown tier 3 materials, tier 3 titanium iron, tier 3 jinx aluminum. Soon, a list of materials appeared on Wanderer's display. The E unknown label was because he hadn't input the material information into the database. The scanner detected the molecular structure to determine the material's grade. This similar grade is also used in spiritual plants. But instead of molecular structure what is measured is the density and purity of mana. So much tier 3? Maximus muttered in shock. For the past few months he had barely come across any tier 3 materials. Even when he did find some, it was only bits and pieces salvaged from destroyed mechanical devices. Scan for biological activities. Maximus thought that since this place was rich in tier 3 materials, it must be teeming with monsters. Wanderer, detected 14,481 tier 3 monster activities, 374,432 tier 2 monster activities, XX tier 1, and 1 human activity. Huh? No tier 4? Maximus questioned. This was the first time he had encountered such a large number of tier 3 monsters. Usually, they only appeared in groups of a hundred, yet there were more than ten thousand. Yet there was not even a presence of a tier 4 monster. Huh? A human? Maximus finally noticed the human activity. Human activity was listed last in the scanning because humans were the weakest biological entities here. Wanderer, send a signal to the human and attempt to establish communication. There was a signal transceiver in the RV, though unfortunately, it was weak and can only connect nearby. It can only be used as a signal for his robots and drones. Given enough material, he would like to create a stronger signal transceiver that can reach all over the world. After all, there were only around 12 million testers in this world. Getting in contact with them can make this 100-year survival much easier. However, according to calculation, he estimated that this world had a radius of about 100,000 kilometers, 15 times larger than Earth. Creating a signal transceiver that can cover the whole wasteland without flying would need at least tier 4 materials. In the underground base, a man was busy creating something when his signal transceiver received a signal. Someone? he questioned. He was Andrew, a seeker who had been in the Origin Arcana Institute for more than a thousand years. He had also taken the mechanic golden trial no less than ten times. Although it was said that death here meant death in reality, it was only the case if you died within this world. If you felt endangered, you could simply exit, which equated to a failure. The reason he had taken the golden trial multiple times, even in the face of danger, was due to the reward of the special student status. Having undergone the mechanic golden trial numerous times, he had become well adapted. Of course, surviving for a hundred years was not an easy feat. Otherwise, anyone could spam the golden gate trial as many times as they wanted in order to pass. Is someone contacting me? Andrew muttered as he approached the signal transceiver and pressed enter. Hello. Inside Maximus RV. Hello, Maximus said. This was the first human he had encountered so far, so he was curious. Um, who is this? I'm Maximus. You're the first human I've met, so I'm curious. Oh? How did you find me? It's a biological scanner. What scanner? You managed to create such an advanced one in just three years? Andrew was shocked. 
After all, the materials in each golden trial were unique. Unless you studied and know all kinds of materials in the world. One could only do their best to adapt and use these world's unique materials based on similarities. This is also why, although they studied for thousands or even millions of years, passing the Golden Gate trial is still uncertain. For example his base. He had been here for three years, groping around. Due to being lucky, in the beginning there was a bunch of Tier 3 materials just lying around. With his knowledge, he created a Tier 3 weapon and sweeped the surroundings clean. He planned to stay here for at least 10 years, so he had been isolating his base regardless of the cost. Without an advanced scanner, finding his position is nearly impossible. In fact, a few months ago, when it reached the three-year mark, a bunch of Tier 3 monsters came yet he still didn't find him. Yet Maximus easily found him, which could only mean that he had an advanced scanner. Well, it's been three years. That's quite a long time, Maximus bragged. Um, Andrew didn't know what to say. He thought, you're right, you're awesome. By the way, what do you want from me? Andrew finally asked. He didn't believe that Maximus had contacted him solely out of curiosity. How about joining my team? I need some capable subordinates, Maximus offered. A while ago, when he had contacted Andrew, he had sent a drone to observe his base. Seeing Andrew's base, Maximus couldn't help but praise it. The isolation measures were truly top-notch. Monsters could pass right by the area without noticing Andrew. Even the Tier 3 monsters seemed unaware of his presence. Join you? Why would I join you? Andrew sneered. What a joke, as a student of the Origin Arcana Institute he still had arrogance deep in his bones. Becoming a subordinate of someone is unacceptable. Although he's only a seeker now, he believes that he is better than anyone. That's also why he's been able to take the Golden Gate trial despite failing multiple times. It's simple. Because I can both kill you and save you at the same time, Maximus smiled. He had been contemplating whom to recruit after creating a guild. Technical talents were precisely what he needed. Moreover, those in this Golden Gate trial are certainly not simple individuals. What? Andrew's expression grew gloomy. While he could retake the trial next time, who would want to repeat the same ordeal over and over? Are you sure you want to attack me? Andrew warned. Hee hee, are you relying on those toy weapons of yours? Let's see if you can still use them, Maximus mocked. After he decided to approach Andrew, he had already prepared for any circumstances. He had drones drop signal interfering devices near Andrew's weapons. Unless Andrew operated them manually, his weapons can only become as good as scrap metal. What? Andrew was shocked, hurriedly attempting to operate the weapons. When he didn't receive any response, anxiety crept in. What did you do? Oh, I just placed some signal interference devices. Why don't you go out and remove them? Maximus taunted. Not tested, by Maximus he operated and tap on a few more weapons hidden farther away. Unfortunately for him, the signal interference device had a huge range. What a bad luck, Andrew sighed. I guess I have no other choice but to join you, Andrew compromised through gritted teeth. Of course, he was only acting, once he got closer to Maximus, he would do his best to eliminate him. I'm glad you're someone who can be reasoned, Maximus nodded in satisfaction. But first, put on the gift I sent you. It will be delivered to your door, Maximus said, putting an exquisite necklace on the drone to be delivered. This served as his insurance because he couldn't completely trust anyone. Since it wasn't possible to sign binding contracts here, he can only make this thing. The necklace was filled with intricate sensors that could detect thought activity, although not in great detail. The necklace contained micro-energy crystals that could explode upon command. It would ensure that if someone dared to betray him, they would disintegrate. Chapter 119 First Subordinate Soon, the drone carrying the necklace dropped in front of Andrew's door. What is this? Andrew questioned, eyeing the necklace suspiciously. That's the symbol of our friendship, Maximus spoke through the speaker. Friendship? Andrew's expression turned gloomy, his mind racing with thoughts. Is this a bomb? You guessed right. Should I give you another gift? What? Although Andrew had already suspected as much, his anger still flared. Who would willingly put themselves under someone else's control? It's impossible for me to wear this, Andrew declared, tossing the necklace aside. Hey, don't be too hasty. This is just for insurance. Insurance my ass. Andrew retorted, returning with a defiant stance, ready to click the exit button. 
he'd rather endure the trial again than entrust his life to someone else. Relax and listen to me. Go ahead, tell me the nonsense you have to say. You should know that completing the Golden Gate trial isn't easy. If you join me, your chances of passing will skyrocket. So what? I'll pass eventually as long as I keep trying. Heh, if merely trying guarantees your passage, then special student statues should have flooded the Origin Arcana Institute. Indeed, this trial occurred every ten years, but perhaps not even one person passed within a hundred or even a thousand years. And what guarantee do you have to claim that I'll have a higher chance of passing when I join you? My strength? Knowledge? You'll find out after joining me. That's not enough. Andrew wavered. Although he was confident that he could pass the Golden Gate trial with perseverance, confidence didn't always translate to reality. Uh, how about I pay you? I'm quite wealthy. Maximus truly had little else to offer. How much? Andrew already thought of compromising. After all, what Maximus said made sense. And it was already a thousand years and he still didn't pass the Golden Gate trial. How about ten million magic crystals per month? That much? Andrew muttered. Ten million magic crystals equated to a thousand high-grade magic crystals or a thousand credits. That's nearly his yearly income, now that he was already a tier 4 mechanic so earning money was easy. Why per month? Andrew asked, he thought that this is just a one-time deal? Of course, I'll need subordinates after this. I plan to establish a guild once we're out of here. Because there's no contract here, I can only resort to these types of agreements. Previously when he had nothing to do. He browsed through the privileges of a special student. One of the privileges is that setting up a guild didn't require reaching tier 5. So that it, Andrew nodded, understanding the rationale. What about it? Will you join me? Fine, but I won't wear this necklace, Andrew stated firmly. Uh, it's really not appropriate, Maximus agreed, realizing the sensitivity of the situation. After all, everyone here was a proud student of the Origin Arcana Institute. Who would willingly place their life in the hands of others? But how can I trust you? Simple, I can take an oath of promise. Huh? Is this still possible? Maximus asked, feeling new to this concept. While he understood that oaths were binding for the powerful, he wasn't sure how effective they would be on weaker individuals. After all, if oaths were so powerful, why bother with contracts? Naturally, oaths aren't effective for those of us who are low in strength, Andrew explained. But if you were to break an oath, you would never advance to tier 7. Is that so? Maximus was skeptical and decided to acquire some knowledge about the mechanism of oaths from the system. Oath mechanism, initial, 0 slash 10 million? Plus 15, 000. zero zero. Oath mechanism, transcendent, max. After studying the oath mechanism, he learned that having an oath was akin to tossing sealed trash into your soul. As long as you upheld the oath, the trash in your soul would remain contained. However, if you broke the oath, your soul would become tainted with impurities. Making advancement to higher tiers, especially tier 7 and above, extremely difficult. The reason it took too many points for such knowledge is because oath is like a play of words, without enough ingenuity toward words, the oath would probably full of loopholes. So the oath mechanism also offered knowledge about play of words, which took most of the life points. Okay, you can take the oath, Maximus compromised. Andrew then took an oath, promising to never betray Maximus during the trial. As for matters outside the trial, they would need to sign a contract. After all, contracts were more reliable than the so-called oaths. Now that we're teammates, it's time to clean up this place, Maximus declared, in satisfaction. Clean up this place? You mean those tier 3 monsters outside? Yes, why not? Can you do it? There are so many tier 3 monsters. While Andrew had the capability to eliminate those tier 3 monsters, their sheer number made it not worth the effort. After all, he was here to survive, not to become a monster slayer. Yes, it should be easy, a Maximus replied confidently. With energy crystals equivalent to high-grade magic crystals, killing some tier 3 monsters wouldn't consume much. Furthermore, he could refine these monsters into energy crystals, making it a profitable endeavor. By the way, why are there no tier 4 monsters here? It's quite odd. What tier 4 monsters? They only appear after 10 years. Huh? Then why am I constantly hunted by them? You're being hunted by tier 4 monsters? Could it be that you're already an official student? Yes, that's right. 
I managed to reach 100,000 steps on the celestial ascent path, which qualified me as an official student directly. I see, no wonder you've advanced so much technologically in just three years. Andrew then explained to Maximus that official students who undertook the Golden Gate trial with official status faced trials twice as challenging. Originally if there were only tier 6 monsters in the world but because of Maximus participating. The birth of a tier 7 monster is very possible. So that's it. No wonder I've been hunted like there's no tomorrow, Maximus exclaimed, recalling his experiences from the past few months with a sigh. If it hadn't been for his system, he might not have survived. He wondered if Silas is still in the trial. On the other side of the world, Silas was running for dear life. Damn, when will this end? Silas cursed with bloodshot eyes. Silas had barely slept or eaten, dedicating every moment to his survival. If it were not for his strong will that had been tempered for millions of years, he would have already gone crazy. He wondered if Maximus had already given up. A few days later, the once sound-filled city was finally clear of threats. Wanderer, have all the collection robots do their work. Wanderer, yes host. Commencing collection task. Small robots emerge from the RV, starting to gather materials and corpses. Wow. What is this magnificent beast? Andrew's eyes lit up as he laid eyes on the RV. Andrew had just left his base and finally had a moment to appreciate Maximus's masterpiece. This is three years of hard work, Maximus said with pride. What a beauty! Andrew commented, running his hands over the RV like an obsessed enthusiast. As a mechanic, seeing such a creation was a delight. What's your plan now, boss? Since becoming a subordinate, Andrew quickly adapted to his new role. I'm planning to build a Tier 4 weapon. What? A Tier 4 weapon? How is that even possible? Why not? You see, boss, there are only Tier 3 materials here. How can you possibly create a Tier 4 weapon? Andrew expressed disbelief. Unless you perfectly understand the molecular structure of a material, you couldn't make it stronger than it inherently was. It would be like trying to turn stone into something stronger than steel. Take a closer look at the RV, Maximus suggested without elaborating. What RV- Andrew questioned, unsure of Maximus's point, but he inspected the vehicle nonetheless. What? What is this? Is this tier 2 black Uri iron? How can it have the hardness of a tier 3 material? This is also tier 2 silver red. How is this possible? Andrew was on the verge of a breakdown. Although he had heard that full mastery of a subject could turn the impossible into reality, seeing it firsthand was still shocking. How is it? Maximus asked with a smile. How did you achieve this? I mastered every molecular structure of these materials, changing its property is easy. Is that even possible? All the materials here are unique. Even if you master every molecular structure, strengthening it is nearly impossible. But I've done it, haven't I? Maximus didn't provide further explanation. Boss. You're my boss. Teach me your craft. Andrew suddenly rushed towards Maximus and grabbed him tightly. All right, all right. I still need to make tier 4 weapons. I'm tired of those tier 4 monsters hounding me wherever I go. Yes, boss. Tell me what I can do. Andrew became enthusiastic. His pride had long been set aside. Maybe Maximus is his chance to ascend to higher heights. Chapter 120 Shadow City A week later. Boss, how's it going? Did you finish the tier 4 weapon? Andrew asked as he entered Maximus's workshop. Hmm, it's almost done, Maximus replied, his gaze fixed on the massive weapon resting on the table. How's your progress with the signal transceiver I mentioned? Boss, it's quite difficult. I still need a few years to create such a powerful transceiver, Andrew sighed. Maximus had asked him to develop a transceiver capable of covering at least the entire continent they were on. If it's just a normal transceiver then it's easy. But what Maximus needed is a transceiver that can forcibly connect with other transceivers. Hmm, take your time. After all, we still have seven years until the ten-year mark. As for the tier 4 monster that was coming for me? As long as this tier 4 weapon is finished they were done for. That's great. Andrew's eyes lit up with determination as he returned to working on the transceiver. Another week later. In Maximus's workshop. Boom asterisk. Roar asterisk. 
wondered, host, a tier 4 monster is approaching from 998 kilometers away. Oh? It's finally here. Fortunately, the tier 4 weapon is complete, albeit a bit rough, Maximus mumbled, eyeing the somewhat bulky weapon before him. Due to the rushed construction, the weapon appeared bulky and cumbersome. It hadn't even been properly mounted onto the RV. But it'll suffice. Go call the collection robot to mount this thing a Maximus order Wanderer. Wanderer, yes host. A few minutes later. Boss, are you testing the weapon today? Andrew emerged due to the commotion and asked. No, a tier 4 monster is headed this way. So soon? Andrew murmured, but a glance at Maximus's expression told him the reason. With a danger magnet like Maximus in the vicinity, it was hardly surprising that the monsters flocked to them. Enough chit-chat, help me mount this thing, Maximus urged, giving Andrew a nudge. Sure thing, boss. With the assistance of collection robots and Wanderer, Maximus and Andrew mounted the Tier 4 weapon onto a platform, allowing Wanderer to have full control over it. Wanderer, is the energy reserve sufficient? Wanderer, host, there is approximately 0.8 exajoules of energy remaining. It should be enough, a Maximus reasoned. After all, clearing over 10,000 Tier 3 monsters from before had consumed at least 0.4 exajoules of energy. As for the corpses, Maximus hadn't had the time to process them, as he was busy creating the Tier 4 weapon. Wanderer, ready and fire. Wanderer, firing sequence commencing. Coordinates, 728, 23, 2. Speed, 300 meters per second. Calculating. Calibrating. Fire initiated. Boom! The tremendous explosion generated sonic waves, causing various robots to topple. Even Maximus and Andrew were affected by the shockwave. Wanderer, report. Maximus fought dizziness and inquired. Wanderer, report, no observable remains within a three-kilometer radius from the epicenter of the blast. Hmm, Maximus lay down, allowing his body to recover. A few minutes later. Damn, boss, your weapon is way too intense, Andrew couldn't help but complain. Both of them were injured by their own weapon, so it was only natural for Andrew to voice his grievances. Shut up. I rushed through the whole process, using subpar tier 3 materials to create a tier 4 weapon. What did you expect? The weapon's performance was clearly a disappointment. If it wasn't his creation, he'd toss it aside like rubbish. Oh right. It's still impressive, boss. You managed to create such a powerful weapon in just two weeks, Andrew corrected himself. Sigh, it looked like it needed some major upgrade. Don't worry, boss. Take all the time you need. Three years later. The vast wasteland once teeming with biological monsters had been replaced by a sprawling mechanical factory. In the periphery, there is a hint of vegetation adding color to the previously desolate landscape. In one of the rooms, Andrew gazed at the transceiver with tired eyes and a numb spirit. Every beep seemed to momentarily halt his heartbeat. Beep asterisk. Beep asterisk. With each subsequent beep, Andrew's excitement grew. Beep asterisk. The third beep displayed hundreds of thousands of signals received, indicating his success. Finally. Andrew's energy surged as he leaped up. Boss, I'm finished. He shouted, racing toward Maximus. Boss. All right, calm down. I'm busy here, Maximus waved his hand, engrossed in his work. Boss, I finished the transceiver you requested, Andrew said, hoping for praise. Oh? You did a good job. You finished it quite early, Maximus finally turned his head to Andrew and commended. Ha ha ha, I'm that awesome, Andrew laughed, holding his hips confidently. Hmm, now we can recruit others. But how do we do that, boss? Everyone here is so arrogant. How could they join us? Just send a general message displaying images and information about our base. And for those who don't want to join, offer to trade items of equal value. Wouldn't that expose us, boss? Humph, look at our surroundings. Even if tier 5 monsters come here, they'll be turned into minced meat due to our bombardment. Maximus didn't worry about his safety. In the past three years, besides upgrading the RV, he had fortified the base into an impenetrable stronghold. Unless it was a horde of tier 5 monsters, they could just dream of breaking into his base. Um, you're right, boss. Glancing at the densely packed tier 4 weapons, Andrew broke into a cold sweat. He could only hope that any coming visitors would behave themselves. 
How should we name our base, boss? Let's call it Shadow City. Simple and clear. Then I'll get to work, boss. Andrew proceeded to fulfill his role, spreading the word to anyone about Shadow City. Once he was done, he returned to his work, aiming to enhance the transceiver's range to cover the entire world. Soon, the message reached hundreds of thousands of people within the transceiver's range. Huh, did I receive a message? What's this? Another survivor? Sareb muttered to himself as he heard the beeping sound. Let's see. Upon reading the detailed description of Maximus's base, he couldn't help but be amazed. Shadow City. How amazing so much progress. Huh? It's possible to trade? Sareb read and looked at the bundles of Tier 4 materials in his room. He was fortunate to have spawned in an area rich in Tier 4 materials. However, unfortunately, using Tier 4 materials was a hundred times more challenging than Tier 3, so he hadn't made much progress. Oh, they already have Tier 4 weapons? Should I get one? Sareb decided and packed his things as he made his way to Maximus's base. Others also packed their belongings in hopes of exchanging technology with Shadow City. As for recruitment, only a few individuals saw the value in it and bothered to consider the offer. Unless they were truly desperate, most were hesitant to join any group. Several months passed and Sareb came to Shadow City. Is this Shadow City? Gazing at the imposing mechanical city before him, he couldn't help but sigh. What a genius, I'm no match for this. As he approached, a drone flew toward him. Please state the purpose of your visit. I'm here to trade. Please follow me. The drones were controlled by Wanderer, giving them a bit of intelligence. Sareb followed the drone to a designated area for trading. Upon seeing that he was here, he stepped out of his vehicle, clad in bionic armor. Uh, how do I initiate a trade? Observing the empty shed, he couldn't help but ask. Wanderer, hello there, I'm Wanderer. You can inquire with me about trading. Suddenly, a bright screen appeared, projecting the virtual image of Wanderer. He was portrayed wearing a cowboy hat, a futuristic outfit, and smoking a cigar. Hmm, can I see the list of your products? Of course. Soon, a list of available products along with an exchange list was presented to Sareb. So many varieties of Tier 4 weapons? I'll take three. Oh, there's also a portable home. I'll take that. This scanner is more powerful than mine. I'll buy it. Huh? What's this energy crystal? It's a concentrated energy source containing about one exajoule of energy. So much? Sareb couldn't help but be shocked. One of the reasons he struggled to utilize Tier 4 materials was due to the lack of sufficient energy. Encountering concentrated energy was a pleasant surprise. I'll buy it. Sareb clicked hastily. Huh? You also accept monster corpses? Realizing that energy crystals could be exchanged to seemingly worthless corpses, he couldn't help but grow excited. Ha ha ha, I'll buy some weapons and hunt monsters and earn money, Sareb thought with a grin. That's it. How much is the total? Tier 4 weapons, various auxiliary devices, energy crystals, exquisite synthetic food. The total is triple X tier 4 materials or triple X tier 3 materials or triple X corpses. So much? Uh, I don't have enough materials. Sareb suddenly realized that he had selected many items. He had become so absorbed in the excitement of browsing that he clicked on whatever he fancied. Disregard the other items, just keep this tier 4 weapon and one energy crystal. Sareb compromised, deciding to earn more money before making further purchases. It's advisable to join Shadow City. You can receive a 50% discount. Is this solicitation? Sareb chuckled and shook his head. Then that will be? Soon, the transaction concluded, and Sareb embarked on his journey to hunt monsters instead of being hunted himself.